Well, hello, everybody, and good morning on this Saturday morning. Uh, for those of you that are new to the channel, you probably noticed we're using a different thumbnail than you might otherwise recognize. This is a question time stream uh, and is actually a function of Patreon and Utreon support tiers. Uh, this is one of the things that you can get to make sure that your questions are answered by me. We've been doing this question time stream for longer than I've been doing anything on the live stream side of things. Hangouts and headlines, of course, being the newest addition to everything here. But ultimately, this is about talking with you all who help support this channel, talking with the community that uh, has many, many comments I can see this morning. Uh, before we get started, I do want to talk to uh, a little bit of the movement in the chat, a little bit to the mods here. Um, this will and always will remain a reasonable minds can differ space, which means if you want to chat about whatever you like, uh, including some things that you'd like to ask me about, uh, I totally understand that. The main rules here are try to keep it clean within reason uh, in, in, in the tech space and absolutely no personal attacks, not on panelists, not on guests, uh, not on each other. Um, that's really the only bright line rule because personal attacks, ad hominem attacks, they are completely anathema to the reasonable minds can differ ethos. Uh, and that's that's what we love to do here. So in a question time stream, what we do is we elevate the Patreon and Utreon supporter tier questions. Uh, we talk about them a little bit. And then afterwards, I talk to the community. Now, this community has grown a lot uh, since the last question time stream. And I know there are questions that a lot of people have an interest in. If you want to flag me with at Hogue Law, I will see that more. If you want to use a super chat, of course, I will see that more. But I'm going to sit here. I'm going to take some questions. Generally speaking, these have traditionally been about an hour long. Uh, you know, we'll see uh, where it goes. I can't stay here as long as I do in a Hangouts and Headlines kind of setting. But I want to talk to you all. And I know a lot of you want to talk to me. So let's talk patron questions first. Why? How did you get so invested in the Depp Be Heard trial? Oh, come on, patrons. <laughs> A lot, a lot of folks on the channel are like, why does Hogue keep covering this trial? Why does he keep talking about these celebrities in this defamation suit? Uh, and the answer, as I think a lot of you know, uh, is that um, I have a friend on LawTube, Legal Bites, Alita, uh, who wanted to cover this. She announced this like, I don't even know, four months ago. She had the longest preview time uh, for wanting to do a trial that I had ever seen uh, in the space where we all communicate. And she wanted to do this. Uh, and she, if you actually look up at my channel and you look up Legal Bites uh, as you search my channel, you will see in December of 2020, right about when the cyberpunk fiasco was happening, that the uh, Alita and Legal Bites were one of the, if not the first guests on this channel. So go check out that video. You can see us trying to figure out how to even use live streaming, how to talk. Uh, amongst each other. And, you know, since that, she reached out to me coming off the Last of Us Part 2 video that I made. Um, she reached out to me since that time. Um, <clears throat> we've all gotten better at streaming and talking and whatnot. Uh, but she said she wanted to do this. And I said, okay, fantastic. I want to back you up. I want to make sure that if I can help, you have the best content that you can uh, on your channel. And that was originally going to be popping my head in uh, and making sure that she wasn't alone broadcasting. Because if you go look at the first days of this trial, we didn't have many viewers. Um, we had we had some, but we didn't have a ton. Uh, and I really just wanted to help support my friend on YouTube work through this on her first big trial. And I'm very happy to say that I did that. Uh, and it got very, very big indeed. Uh, and it proved to be an explosion of growth for her channel. And I'm so, so happy uh, for her. And I think she's an important voice uh, and, and force on YouTube. Um, so that's how I came to start talking about it. When the trial went on break halfway through, I said, well, I've been told by a lot of people, including my fellow panelists, that I should do some live streaming stuff that they think I have an okay presence. I think a lot of you do too. So I'm happy for that. Uh, and I said, well, what was that look like? What does that look like in virtual legality? Uh, because I'm not just going to sit here in kibitz. I'm really not just a celebrity trial person. I'm not going to talk about things that other people are talking about in this space. I got to do it in a way that I'm interested in and, and do it a little bit differently. So while I'm spitballing this idea, I come up with the headlines concept because one, it'll survive the trial. 
right? I know a lot of you have asked me about that, but no, headlines and hangouts or hangouts and headlines, I really should just call it H&H because I say it wrong all the time, um, will survive the Johnny Depp versus Amber Heard trial. It's by design that I can just chat with you all about interesting things in the media that I'm already kind of looking at and the kind of things that I talk about in the more formal virtual legality episodes and talk with you all in live stream environment, have a fun morning, kind of everybody can get ready for their day, at least here on the East Coast of the United States. I know it's different times around the world. Um, and I've been having a lot of fun with that. And I think that's proven to be pretty popular. And I'm super excited uh, about continuing to do that show as well. <clears throat> Excuse me, I've been doing a lot of talking the past two months. Uh, but um, uh, as that proceeds, I know a number of you have asked, well, what about my virtual legalities? I didn't subscribe here for you talking about headlines in the morning and chatting with people. That's totally fair. Essentially, I thought I could do those episodes during the last two weeks of the trial, and I was wrong. Uh, what my days have looked like have been waking up, trying to get some work in before streaming at 7 a.m., streaming into 8.30, 8.30 into 8.30, a 12-hour stream, and then working from 8.30 until I go to sleep before starting the next day. I just didn't have enough time to do those specific videos. I hope you can forgive me on that. They will return. I love video games. I love technology. I love software. That is all coming back. All of it's coming back. And I think without the trial, I don't even know how it'll feel to have not 12 hours taken up <laughs> in the middle of these in the middle of these days. I think after the trial, I will be able to do headlines and virtual reality videos, which you know are unscheduled. They're not exactly every day of the week, but you know, a lot of days uh, a week, at least three times a week, I would gather and go from there. And everybody in this new audience that can hopefully get along uh, can like different aspects of what I do, the, the formalized virtual legalities uh, with the research and all the highlighting, the, the stuff that you like uh, on tech and pop culture and software and things and the fun headline streams uh, where we, we mostly hang out. It's, it's a mostly casual environment uh, in the morning. So hopefully that will work for both people. Uh, and 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 that that'll work for everybody. I will see how it goes. All of this is always new. It's one of the things I really like about this job is that it's constantly figuring out what you're going to do next, researching, going forward, et cetera. Second question, did you have to sleep on the sofa the night of your 10 hour live test stream, test live stream? Yeah. So headlines starts out. I say, all right, we're going to start it really early on a Saturday morning. I think I think it was seven. It might've been eight, eight in the morning on Saturday. I say, look, I want to do this as a test stream. I compare it to putting out an iOS app in some country that has a very small base that you can check things with the audience before you send it out to some of the bigger, the bigger markets. And I say, I'm going to do this early. And then you probably saw it wound up being a very, very, very long stream. Indeed. It was comic book day. I missed out on the family festivities that I had agreed to do. And my wife, I think she told me she was very angry about it while I was streaming, like hour two, three, four. Uh, and then by the time we got to the end, that had dissipated. Uh, and uh, she was super happy for me because we found that success. We had fun talking with that audience. Uh, and so, no, I did not have to sleep on the sofa that night. Follow-up question. Did Mrs. Hogue establish an SOP for future live streams, operating procedure? Uh, no, I basically did. I've been figuring out what I want to do. Actually, the trial starting uh, after... Uh, my stream had allowed me to say, okay, an hour and a half works pretty well. It's it's one headline. Uh, it's it's a it's a chat section before the article, the article, and then the post uh, article. The only thing that I'm going to change about that is because I've been bouncing essentially directly from the show into um, the the legal bite stream of the Depp versus Heard trial. I'm going to change uh, that. I'm going to add uh, as part of my steps after finishing the stream timestamps. Uh, so you could see you know opening chat headline, closing chat. I think that's going to work uh, really well. And I'm sorry I haven't been able to kind of get to that. That actually requires me to go in and look at the video and do these kinds of things that I couldn't do when I just jumped straight on <clears throat> to the secondary stream. So I think that's going to work out uh, in the long term. But as always, if you have thoughts, leave them in comments to the videos. I see most everything. We got a little bit of churn in the comments right now. Uh, so uh, I, I might not see yours, but I, I try to see most everything. If you've got an idea, uh, and certainly if you've got headlines, the easiest way to tag me on those is a DM. I can't promise I will use everything that you recommend because I get a lot right now. But especially as we transition out of this kind of one topic focus, uh, it will be helpful to see what you all want to see covered in that headlines area. We're going to be doing more video games. We're going to be doing more tech, some of the other stuff that I'm, I'm used to. We're going to be doing more general headlines. So we will look at what that becomes uh, as we transition out of the 
trial. I'm personally excited about it because I think that can be a very fun show. I've gotten a lot of good feedback, not just from you guys, uh, but also from some very popular YouTubers uh, <laughs> that have talked about it being a cool format that they might want to participate in, which is pretty exciting. Uh, and I've gotten comments now from almost every author that I've covered in that space. So that's wild. Really wasn't expecting that coverage to get the attention of all the people that wrote these pieces. So that'll be interesting going forward. I'm hopeful that we can get some interviews in this space. I'm going to talk again to Martha Gill next week, see if we can arrange something just so that she can talk about her perspective. And again, as I said in prepping for that interview that we thought was going to happen this past week, in case you're wondering, my job is not going to be too pillory. My job is to figure out exactly how you come to that perspective and to let the interviewee talk about that with you. You can always talk to me in the limited time we have with any guests that want to appear on this channel. It is not going to be designed as some kind of attack debate piece. Uh, and so anybody that's an author of these pieces is always welcome to come on. And I would love to chat with any of you because I think that's super fun. Uh, and hopefully that'll be a big thing uh, for, I don't know, years, years to come. It's a lot of fun. A lot of fun indeed. What is your favorite corporate buzzword? I think it's going to be synergy. I don't really think of synergy very often uh, in the real world. Um, but that's the one I hear the most uh, common. I, you know, you also have core competencies. And then, of course, you have synergize your core competencies. Corporate buzz speak is, is funny. It's a language in and of itself. I don't, <laughs> it's, it's, just, it's just amusing to me. Um, so I think corporate buzz speak is probably not my favorite thing because, as you can tell from both Virtual Legality Prime and Virtual Legality Headlines Edition, I like clarity. And corporate buzzwords, I think, obscure clarity in an important way. And uh, that's that's no fun at all. <clears throat> How difficult is it for a lawyer to shift from specializing in family law, mergers and acquisitions, tax law, et cetera, to switch to a different area of law? Is there a point of no return? I don't think there's a point of no return. I think there's a point where you've got enough value in your specialty that it's extremely costly to you just in terms of opportunity cost to switch spots. Um, but honestly, I have worked with a ton of attorneys in very high levels of their fields that if you go and have the conversation with them, you take them out to lunch, they will tell you of the four different practice types they tried before they found that one. Um, you know, I have uh, my mentor who taught me virtual, uh, taught me virtual legality, no, taught me venture capital, taught me mergers and acquisitions, taught me, uh, taught me all this stuff, uh, did, you know, real property. Uh, did intellectual property licenses, did things other than what he was doing when I first met him before he hired me. Um, and that was actually very important to kind of learn, which is that, you know, you think you know what you want to do, or more specifically, if you're, especially if you're working in a large law firm, you're hired to do a specific thing. And it's not really up to you if that's, if that's the job that's available to you, or that's the place you want to live, or that's the firm you want to work at. And you look at it and you talk to him and you say, okay, all right, you hired me for antitrust litigation, but I really feel a calling to do uh, entrepreneurship and these kinds of things. As long as the firm does it, maybe they can work with you there. And then I, I've often talked about in 2008, when there was an economic downturn, I was doing venture capital effectively all the time and uh, venture capital dried up. Our deals dried up. They, they got delayed. They came back. Um, but essentially, the, I talked to the firm and the firm was talking to everybody else and said, you know, go find something else that works. And that's when I looked into software and technology and video games and things that I really like to say, okay, I'd love to be interested in that industry. It's very helpful to your clients if you're really excited about what they're doing. And let's see what I can do there. And it's then that I developed essentially a software as a service specialty uh, line of work uh, that you know taught me SLAs and server structure and things. And that kind of led into other things that in some respects I, I know enough to be dangerous on, uh, but that helpfully broadened my book of business and, and helped me transition out of uh, big law firm life into, uh, you know, wholly owned uh, law firm life. Uh, so I think that there's not a point in no return and you really shouldn't think that you can always try something new. Uh, but if you become really invested in something, it can feel and will be uh, costly to move out of that just because you have such value in whatever you've built up. Um, so but if there's a lull and that value is somewhat dissipated or diluted, absolutely. Try different things. Life is too short. <laughs> Thank you for the question. Hey, Rick. Hey. 
Just wondering if you've ever done any kind of contracts for musicians, music labels, setting up an LLC, recording contracts, etc. The answer is no. Uh, but it's a little bit longer than that because what I have done is I've in licensed music. I've helped uh, my companies that are creating things uh, go and get music. So that's not on the musician side. Um, and I will tell you this, you've probably heard me say this in virtual legality, uh, but uh, music contract, the intellectual property behind music licensing is by far the most complex piece of copyright law. There are multiple licenses needed just to use the music, how you would seek to use it in something like a video game. Um, and then they have statutory things that you can do. And then they have large rights holding organizations that you can use. Uh, and so effectively, it's a very specialized area of law. And you're mostly going to be best off going with some counsel that only does this. <clears throat> and there's a lot of areas of law that are like that, where they're designed around a lawyer that only does this, which can sound boring to some extent it is, but they only do music licenses, et cetera. And so I know enough, I've helped work with them, um, but they are highly technical areas of copyright law uh, and licensing law in general. And so uh, I think I even, at the last time I had to work with one, I, I talked to a specialist buddy of mine that works at a boutique firm as well. Um, so yes. And then do you have a favorite genre of music or are you an all around kind of guy? Anything on in the background while drafting contracts? Generally speaking, I draft in silence. Um, for the rest of the stuff that I'm doing, uh, potentially reviews or um, other things that I work on here in a legal capacity, I mostly listen to music without lyrics. Um, and that doesn't just mean I'm sitting back listening to classical. I very often listen to movie soundtracks. Uh, but lyrics, especially if you're trying to read through a 120-page legal document, lyrics can throw you. Uh, and so I'm listening to James Horner. I'm listening to Hans Zimmer. I'm listening to John Williams. Uh, and listening to sometimes famous movie soundtracks, sometimes more obscure movie soundtracks, uh, television soundtracks, video game soundtracks, uh, although those uh, can be a little bit distracting as well because if you have a particularly fond memory of something, uh, you, can, you can get distracted from what you're doing. Uh, so that's what I'm listening to. Otherwise, I don't know what you would describe what I listen to. I, I think it's probably most often under the alternative label, uh, but... Like that's too all encompassing a label I have found. There's a lot of stuff in there I don't like to listen to, uh, but I listen to that. Um, you know, I let's see. You know, one of our wedding songs, if not wedding songs, but one of our one of the songs that we enjoyed uh, at our wedding a few years back was like "Boys Like Girls," that kind of thing. Um, so yeah, I'm uh, I, I don't I don't like anything fancy. And when I'm working, I generally listen to things without lyrics. Um, so that is the set of patron questions we have for today. Um, thank you so much to everybody that supports the channel. Thank you, everyone who goes and checks out those tiers and helps make all of this possible, helps me be able to do more and more and more of this without feeling like I am uh, betraying the responsibilities I have to my wife and family uh, and not able to you know, keep the lights on. Uh, or, or feed them. Uh, because honestly, this takes away from the time that I'm otherwise business developing or practicing law. And it is through the support of folks like you uh, that I'm so, so thankful for uh, that I can continue to work on this and, and help make this kind of content and, and stuff uh, for you all. So thank you so much for that. Let's look at some super chats and then I will swing around and, and look at the comments in general. Callista became a new YouTube member. Thank you, Callista. Sneaky in lane. Hello from Poland, Hoag. Cute face emoji. Hello, Poland. Nice to see you. April Wright, have you read the Jennifer Howell info yet now that the jury has the case? No. The current plan is that uh, I will be exposed to various pieces of evidence on Tuesday on Legal Bites while we're doing jury deliberation wait time. Um, and that... Uh, uh, I've been told that people want to get my reaction on tape. Uh, so I don't know what all is in there, but I will be giving some kind of reaction on tape. I think that will wind up being Tuesday because honestly, I don't know how much time we have in jury deliberation zone before the jury returns a verdict. Dancing Beagle. That's an adorable picture. Do you think the cultural makeup of the jury has any impact? Was talking to an Asian friend about their culture of saving face. Which side does it benefit, if any? I feel wildly unqualified to talk about 
uh, Asian or realistically any other culture. I will say, I think personally, the demographic of five men and two women is maybe a little bit more important. Uh, but while it might be more important, I legitimately don't know which direction any given uh, gender would go uh, on this. Because if you look at like the folks that uh, you know watch the streams and talk with us, seems to be very supported. Johnny Depp does uh, by women, uh, but not any given woman speaks for all of womanhood, and not any given man speaks for all of manhood. Uh, and so it's very difficult for me to say. Uh, certainly in this space, I think you've heard me say often, I, I don't like generalizing across demographic lines. Uh, so I appreciate the question, but the answer, the honest to God answer is, I don't know. Uncivil Law, question, StreamYard invite or solo? Uh, I didn't put up a, a StreamYard invite for this Uncivil Law. I, I tell you what, I think I'm gonna do this one solo. Uh, I actually don't know how whether question time survives all this. I'm going to be re-examining the tiers and things because I'm answering questions every morning now. Uh, so it feels a little different. Or maybe I can make one of the tiers, you know, you, uh, you get a number of questions um, for that kind of thing. But um, all of this is kind of still in flux and civil. But I really appreciate it. Uh, I just don't, I, I don't think I'm going to add anybody right this second. So thank you so much, buddy. Uh, but I'm going to, I'm going to press on like this right now. Dio game can uh, Microsoft buy studios below $101 million before ABK closes. They can try to buy whatever they want. I think the question is at that level, they don't get reviewed for Hart Scott Rodino. Uh, that, uh, that the Hart Scott Rodino process isn't a guarantee of any kind. It doesn't prevent a deal from getting unwound. Uh, so it's not some kind of safe Harbor for keeping it low. Of course, if you're only spending a hundred million or less, it's unlikely you're going to present a competitive concern, uh, but Microsoft can go out and buy whatever they like. It's just a matter of whether or not the FTC will take notice of that and treat it negatively as part of their evaluation of purchasing Activision Blizzard. So the answer is yes. Uh, I don't know that they want to upturn the apple cart while they're still under review. Sneaky and Lane, Emily just jots down timestamps during the live stream. Okay, Emily is better than me. I'm fully willing to acknowledge this, uh, but uh, I'm only getting used to this. Headlines and Hangouts has been wildly successful. I'm super thrilled. It's only existed for like two weeks. I think two weeks from this Saturday. Um, so I will get it. That makes a lot of sense to jot down things in the live streams, uh, but I'm not there yet. Um, and, uh, I will, I will be adding those timestamps because I think it's important. Ruger nine times 19, Jonathan Frakes or Will Wheaton, who plays Rob in the law tube movie? Well, okay. So is it like the platonic ideal of each in terms of their next generation setting, or is it right now? Because I, I think Will Wheaton's closer right now in terms of age and look. Jonathan Frakes back in the day, I think, would be a closer match uh, and has some more of that Rob energy. Thank you for the question. Uh, Mark uh, Ashamed, Hard Space Shipbreakers has released. Have you seen the contract in terms of service? Not the in real life one, but the ones at the start of the campaign is part of the story. No, I haven't. I wonder how accessible that is. A fictional TOS would be funny to read through. I wonder if I could access it. Thank you for flagging it for me. That would be a fun virtual legality. Janet Ridgeway, I took your advice, bought an Xbox S. What should be my first game to try? Total newbie, only game I played with Splinter Cell over 18 years ago. Um, it really depends on what you're looking for. What I would recommend is getting Game Pass for one month. Uh, it's 15 bucks, I think. Get Game Pass for one month. You'll have like 100 options. And then you can look through those and try some things. Um, and I love Game Pass. I, I, I keep it on all the time. But do that, check that out, and get back to me because I'm super interested in hearing about your video game journey. I love this stuff, and I would be more than happy to continue to give advice uh, on this. And in, in Game Pass, uh, it depends on what you like. I currently recommend um, uh, Yudin uh, Chronicles uh, Rising uh, is very cool, like a little light RPG. Uh, but there's so much good stuff in there, uh, and it really depends on what you like. So if you give me a little bit more feedback of what you're interested in, in playing, I would be more than happy to give advice on that. I love trying to connect people with games they're going to enjoy. One of my favorite things in the world. Kent, where do I buy a Hogue Law cap? Nowhere yet. Uh, this is a prototype from when I launched the firm uh, six years ago. Uh, so I uh, I don't actually have any, any more of these. Um, I'm going to look to get those. A lot of people like the Hogue Law hat concept. Um, so I'm going to look to get those in a store of some kind. Uh, I really am thankful for you, you know, wanting, wanting to get the hat. 
Uh, Oima, I'm so sleepy, I can't figure out how to phrase this question. So forgive me if it's confusing. Do sports agents do contracts? Do they have to go to law school? I'm thinking Jerry Maguire type guys. Lol, does that make sense? Most agents are lawyers. They don't have to go to law school. But as you can tell from those contracts, especially if you're getting big, successful contracts, um, it is very helpful to be able to read contracts in the way a lawyer reads them. Um, so definitely uh, most agents are lawyers. I don't think it's a requirement in every state, but it is in a lot of them. Agents actually have uh, specific statutes for them in a number of these states uh, that are pretty interesting. Uh, so that's the that's kind of the long answer to your question. I think there are jurisdictions where you don't have to be a lawyer, but I, honestly, if I were a sports star, which I'm not, self-evidently, um, I would want an agent that was a lawyer. Uh, Gizmo One, what is your favorite video game soundtrack? Oh my god, um, I'm thinking it's the Final Fantasy VII remake soundtrack. I love Nobuo Uematsu's stuff. He's the composer for the real successful period of Final Fantasy. Final Fantasy is one of my favorite series uh, and has really operatic vibes, very John Williams of video games. Uh, and Final Fantasy VII has a really cool soundtrack, but the original was made in, you know, old school musical uh, instrument synthesized and everything else. The remake takes it all, makes them orchestral, but still are based on some of the best songs of all time in video games. So I'm going to go with Final Fantasy VII Remake. Apple Pie, good morning, Hoag. The trial made me miss out on a rare fish yesterday in Final Fantasy XIV. I'm sorry. On happier news, looking forward to Jedi Survivor. It looks cool, doesn't it? I'm, I'm interested in it. I wish it were this year because I feel like I'm running out of things to actually look forward to this year. Uh, but, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's very, very cool. It's very cool. Oh, Angel Regal Gaming, what studio do you think Sony intends to acquire? Sony recently said that they're going to continue their acquisition binge. I, you know, I think whatever's next is more likely one of their technical uh, companies that we've never heard of before or somebody that does back-end stuff. That's always more likely than some of the big names. But it honestly wouldn't surprise me once the Square Enix spinoff is done that Sony takes a good long look at Square Enix, the Japanese company that survives after getting rid of IDOS and Crystal Dynamics. That, I think, is a big is a good fit even though I like thinking of Square Enix as putting out third-party properties everywhere. So that's that's what I think. I don't know what they might wind up doing. Certainly, consolidation comes for us all here in the video game industry right now. Blurry Lights, where would I look to find out why the U.S. Supreme Court expanded the First Amendment to include defamation in 1964 if before then it was just a state law issue? That's a good question. I, and in terms of that year, um, is that New York versus Sullivan? New York versus Sullivan is kind of the, the the keystone defamation case that applies the the way defamation and the First Amendment kind of interact. It's what made the states kind of have to work their laws around it. So I, I would be willing to guess that you're you're talking about New York v, v. Sullivan. So check that one out. Uh, and I think Rob at Law and Lumber just did a video on like the history of defamation law. So you might want to check that out as well. Law and Lumber. I think he just did a video on that. Don't hold me to it. I think he was telling us all about it. Um, so I think it went up by now. And then I'm just, uh, Steam Yard is just all over the place. Circa 1990, did you ever study first order logic for doing contracts? Uh, no. I So I wound up having, let me just move this around a little bit. I wound up having uh, logic um, as part of, uh, ironically enough, Two sets of classes. So I was a economics and math major in undergrad. I wound up having variations of logic in both the rhetoric side of my teaching and the mathematical side of my teaching. However, if you ask me to take that logic test that I took however many decades ago, uh, I am sure I would fail it right now. Um, so no, I didn't. Contracts. Here's the unfortunate truth about law school. Um, I took a class on contracts, but for the most part, it's not the same as what you actually wind up practicing with, what you use as a skill set. Uh, so law school, at least in my finding, which I loved, I loved the law school experience, was much better at um, theory, kind of concept, critical thinking overall in generalities than it was on any kind of piece of skill that you'd otherwise use in practice from day to day. Dancing Beagle, monthly hangout for new gamers. I have no idea where to start. And last time I played any regular basis, it was Atari and Enchanter, LOL. Uh, yeah. 
Yeah, no, we could definitely do something on the gaming side. I am uh, going to be working through trying to figure out how the logistics work for putting together a game of, uh, you know, Among Us or whatever else is, is going to be fun to play uh, with other lawyers here on YouTube because, honestly, I think watching lawyers play a social deduction game uh, and rib each other could be very, very cool. Um, so I'm looking into that in terms of technicalities. I've never really streamed a video game. So we will see how that goes. Scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. And I think we're set on Super Chats. Did I miss anything? Uh, I think I think we're good on that. So let's just start pulling some questions here uh, in general. Uh, let's see. Uh, I don't see any hog laws here in the middle. Use hog law. Um, and, uh, you know, we will we will chat. There's no requirement to pay me for <laughs> for question time here. Happy to happy to chat with you all. Uh, Hogue Law. I, it's, I think it's one word as my at. Uh, Rebecca Clayton asks, at Hogue Law, what do you think about either Apple, Amazon, or Disney possibly buying EA Gaming? I think it's a strong possibility. Well, I, I don't think Disney's a possibility. Disney worked with EA, and Disney doesn't want to be in the, in, in the um, what do they call it, interactive uh, technologies division or that they used to have. I don't think Disney's at play. Apple and Amazon absolutely want to get a foot in the door on this kind of stuff. I think you may have heard me say in a prior stream, I really feel like Netflix is your dark horse to come out and just spend some cash money to take something like EA. Netflix is working on this kind of thing, on getting into gaming much, much more. It would be a very interesting kind of power play for them, but they have all sorts of problems with their cash position uh, and, and business model. Uh, so thank you for the question. We do have some more Super Chats. Gio Rio, hi, Hogue. Funny how Patreon is a pledge and Super Chat a donation. <laughs> <laughs> they should have used that example. Winky face emoji. Any thoughts on the upcoming Saints Row and Forsaken? Seen Jedi teaser. Uh, enjoy the weekend. Gaming controller. <sighs> Saints Row, I believe in because I believe in Volition. I have not been as convinced by the trailer or the preview footage. I really like Volition as a studio, including Agents of Mayhem, which I know is somewhat uh, beleaguered in terms of uh, folks viewing that game. I think that's actually a cool little design. Uh, so I think Volition is a very good company. I'm looking forward to their output. Uh, Forsaken, I love Square Enix. I will undoubtedly buy it. I don't like the Luminous engine. I don't like the way it makes games look. I, um, I'll i play it. We'll see. I'm not actually very enthused about that one. Uh, Graham Pope, uh, Rottenborn said in closing, just one incident of abuse by JD towards AH means she wins. Can one incident be considered abuse? Surely to be defined as abuse, it must be ongoing. Thoughts? I don't, I don't think so. I mean, I know there was testimony about this and I know some people wanted to advance that as a position, but if I'm thinking about, uh, you know, the movie scene, uh, where the guy comes home drunk from the bar and the wife wants him to stop or whatever. And, and, you know, he slugs her in the kitchen to me, I think that's abuse. And I think if it happens one time, it's abuse. Um, now these are a little bit more gray area kinds of things, except as Amber Heard describes them, of course, <clears throat> but I think you can definitely be abusive with one incident. Um, I just think it probably requires a higher a higher level of incident than maybe uh, just arriving at abuse from from lower level things because that that requires maybe a constancy. But I think you can definitely have an incident that goes straight to abuse. Uncivil Law says I like Hogue. I like you, Uncivil Law. Thank you. Good morning, by the way. Um, and oh, let's see here, Q Revere. I sus Kurt Among Us. Winky face. Yeah, you know Kurt would be up to something in Among Us. He'd be up to something. It wouldn't even matter if he was a human. He'd still be up to something. You know this. Oh, I was looking at a paralegal program in my area. It's two years. Is it worth it to do what paralegals do? God, paralegals are so necessary. <laughs> so I run my own practice, right? And so I have various connections with a bunch of people. And, and one of them is a, essentially a filing agency that is a group of paralegals. And they're so, so useful to helping do all sorts of things. Filing states, figuring out what the state requirements are, uh, giving form documents that you can then actually make legal documents because you have they can't practice law fully, uh, uh, and and so so helpful. I my paralegals uh, that have ever helped me in my entire almost twenty years of career are so so necessary. I love my paralegals so much, um, but um, yeah, no paralegals absolutely worth it. Uh, but uh, well, it's worth it to do what paralegals do. Is the program worth it? I, I don't know what they'll teach you. I don't know what the program is. Uh, but in general, if it looks like it's substantive help, then yes, definitely. Paralegals are right between specialized and non-specialized, but super, super helpful. 
Um, I told you guys you didn't need to super chat. Uh, Shem Pasta, hi, Mr. Ho. Keep up the great work. I know Star Citizen is considered a scam. I use the phrase like, like it's not a real game and things because I find it to be amusing. I don't actually think at a legal level it's a scam. It appears that everybody understands what's happening with it. Uh, but um, yeah, it's it's not a functional product that's likely to release. I was also skeptical as well. Saw the vision in tech they were trying to invent. Sucked me in. Would be great to get a second look at opinion from you. Thank you. Oh, so where this question goes is where I would leave off. And thank you for the very generous super chat. Um, yeah, Star Citizen is not going to release. Not because it doesn't exist and they're not trying things, but because it essentially is more lucrative to work on making ridiculous tech and doing these things and not quote unquote finish than it is to ever finish, which means I don't think it's ever going to get into that wrap up phase. Okay, we've got the tech now build it out into a game or planets or stories or whatever. I think they're just going to keep working on this kind of weird thing. And if that's what you're into, totally fine. Totally great. If you're looking for a game at the end of the day, I think you are going to find yourself wanting. So that's why you get those funny responses from me. Um, but yeah, I love Chris Roberts. I would much rather have a kind of consolidated wing commander game. And I know squadron 42, uh, is supposed to be coming out and has been for years and years and years and years. Uh, but I would rather have that kind of game just because I, I like to have, you know, a story, uh, it told to me, uh, but yeah, no, definitely. Your point is well taken. It is a thing. I just don't think it's a game. Callista, not enough Eorzeans have spoken today. So good morning from Eorzea. Good morning, Final Fantasy player. Jared Vester, hey, Hoag, yeah, uh, I love you. And if you were in a jury, who wins? If I'm in the jury, uh, Johnny Depp wins primarily on republication of the headline and a lack of evidence on the SV. Okay, back to questions. Oh, let's see if we can get this going. Uh, here, Hoaglaw, any thoughts on the Callisto protocol? Do you enjoy horror games? I do enjoy horror games. Although I don't enjoy horror games that are just kind of gore for gore's sake. I enjoy something that's a little bit more thoughtful than that. Um, but yeah, I really like the tension, the ratcheting tension, especially in like a Resident Evil or one of its kind of spinoff games. That doesn't have to be in the Resident Evil family where you're doing that survival horror resource management. There's a, there's a delicious... Uh, tension that comes from not knowing whether you can afford to miss this next shot and making you run past things uh, that I just find to be fantastic. And Resident Evil, as much as it might be, Jill, the master of unlocking and all sorts of stuff, was one of the first to really master the pacing there uh, because it just felt so tense. And then the ending was such a sigh of relief um, as you as you exit on a, on a helicopter in the sunrise, etc. cetera. Um, uh, but it wasn't the first. I played Alone in the Dark before Resident Evil. Um, and yeah, I really like horror games. Callisto Protocol looks coolish. Um, certainly, uh, Dead Space is it was a very cool game in its own right, and I'm looking forward to seeing more. Uh, oh, law. Who, in your opinion, who's going to be head juror? All of my information from the jury uh, regarding the jury comes from like the Robs and Ians of the world. Uh, so I I don't know that I can answer that question, but I do think. You know, generally speaking, it'll be someone of a strong personality. It's a, it's it's usually, you know, someone that the jury thinks that they can trust. So I would expect it to be somebody that's at least outwardly more middle of the road than either one of the sides might otherwise be. <clears throat> Max Geekdom, question, Hogue Law, do you have any thoughts on what is next for LawTube? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think that what you'll find if you're new to all of us is that uh, in the past, we've kind of come together for these trials and then we go off and do our own thing in specialties and, and Emily will keep doing her own thing and Nick will keep doing his own thing. Alita will do her own thing. Um, and, you know, I will do my own thing in virtually Gaudi and, and we'll cross paths and we'll do things with each other from time to time. But it won't be this kind of concentrated, I think somebody described it as summer camp uh, atmosphere of all of us bouncing between the channels uh, all the time. Um, so. Uh, it'll be interesting to see. Um, you know, it's as I've described it. It's not, it's not an organization. It it, it is not uh, rigid. It is a loose coalition of fully sovereign nation states that row in the same direction from time to time. And I think that's great. You can't otherwise organize. Uh, you know, uh, lawyers that have very strong positions about <laughs> what it is they're doing. Um, uh, any better way? I don't think. Uh, but that's. That's ultimately what it is. And so we will see where it goes from here. Wherever it is, I am sure it will be very, very cool. Coral, 
Hoglog, great video game soundtrack, Stardew Valley, written by one person as well as the game, Fantastic Music. I love Stardew Valley's music. As a matter of fact, my girls are often playing it, uh, either when I'm on my phone or doing work, and uh, it's always a delight. It's the most calming, delightful music, uh, and it's a great choice for, for favorite soundtrack, Coral. Wonderful choice. Um, and I'm just pulling at these at random, folks. Uh, Hoglog, congratulations on getting over 100,000 subs and keeping it up. Greetings from Ireland. Hi, Ireland. Yes. Well, you know, we'll see if we can keep it up. You you want to keep an audience, you got to put out good products and hopefully have good conversations. Uh, and I'm super happy to see the growth in the channel. Uh, certainly that's a function of the trial. And so hopefully I can continue to provide products and services uh, that people uh, are satisfied with. And we can keep that subscription number up and, and, and enjoy a, a fun time in the community and with you all. Hoglock, considering you are a movie and gaming buff, what is your favorite movie series based on a video game in reverse game based on a TV or movie? My favorite, my favorite game based on a TV or movie is the original GoldenEye 64 on the Nintendo 64. I think that's the best game that has ever popped out of a movie ever. Um, and then a movie series based on a game. Whew, those are pretty few and far between. Although I think right now it's actually Arcane, uh, the Netflix series that was based around the League of Legends uh, MOBA. Uh, and uh, that is just a fantastic piece of, of art, honestly. If you haven't checked it out, check out Arcane, uh, which is ostensibly about some characters that are in a MOBA, uh, like you might pick characters out of a fighting game, uh, but is really about a lot more uh, and is just fantastic. I think those are my answers. Thank you for the question. Have you ever played League of Legends? I have played it. I am not what I would describe as a League of Legends player. Um, people, people expect a lot of you when you jump into a MOBA. Hoglaw, did you ever play Eternal Darkness on the GameCube? You're gosh darn right I did. Eternal Darkness is one of my favorites, uh, and I highly recommend it if you can find a way to play it. Uh, Eternal Darkness is absolutely fantastic and had some of the coolest stuff. If you guys have never, ever heard of this game, it's basically about a kind of Lovecraftian world in which the main character slowly loses her mind. Uh, and that is done by showing you as the player things that make you lose your mind, such as uh, showing audio uh, uh, or video hitches uh, as if your TV was going to explode, doing very weird things like uh, going out uh, to the menu and showing your save being deleted uh, and uh, that kind of thing throughout in a very, very cool kind of multi-time period piece uh, about, you know, old gods and, and things like that. So a very, very cool game. It is on the GameCube. I don't know if it's accessible in any other way. Michelle C. Hi, Hoag. Do you know if Disney World is working on a VR experience to replace Void and if they will incorporate drones in nighttime shows soon? I have no idea. I actually haven't been to Disney World since before the pandemic. Um, so I have no idea what they're working on right now. Uh, some cool stuff. I know people really like the new Guardians of the Galaxy roller coaster that took the place of Universe of Energy. Um, but I have no idea the answer to that question. I'm so, so sorry. But thank you for the super chat. Uh, let's see what else have we got here. Hoglaw, have you played Amnesia The Dark Descent? You bet. If not, it's one of the best suspense horror games out there. It absolutely is, although I prefer their follow-up, Soma. Soma has so much existential dread and horror in it. I could not love it more. If you haven't checked it out, check out Soma. I like to play it in October because uh, it's just so darn creepy. Amnesia is a fantastic pick, though, too. Uh, what else we got here? Hoglaw, any update on the Epic versus Apple or even Epic versus Google? In short, I kind of watched that from afar. They filed their appellate documents uh, at the Ninth Circuit in Epic versus Apple. I don't know if there's anything to follow up on in Epic versus Google. The truth is, in terms of marketing, Epic has found much more success actually convincing legislatures to do things and may have just convinced the EU to effectively adopt what they wanted from their coalition for app fairness, which would create a whole kind of tidal wave across the world. It, it got passed. It'll be interesting to see how it's interpreted, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but they're having more luck, as I suggested they would, with legislation and the regulatory environment than going through the full legal argument. So I, I've kind of put that on the back burner, uh, but I have seen those things get filed. Uh, one day, if you all want to read through like a hundred page uh, appellate brief, maybe we'll do that. Uh, maybe I'll do it as a live stream so you can just we can just read through it together. Uh, but it's um, it's in the back burner. We will continue to follow it. We will certainly be covering it when it does, in fact, hit the Ninth Circuit. Don't want to miss anything here. Uh, let's see here. 
Northwatch, hi, Hogue. I want to, uh, I would love to hear your review of Delaware business law <laughs> and why over 50% of Fortune 500s are incorporated in the second small state. So, yeah. So, Delaware uh, incorporation is effectively an accident of history. Um, when uh, corporate form really started taking off, it wound up being useful for investors to decide on one forum where, at bare minimum, they could just agree on what the law and rules actually were for those particular um, companies. Uh, depending on whether you want to call it a race to the top or race to the bottom, Delaware wins out. And then there's essentially the network effect that we see with something like Facebook or Twitter or whatnot, where once that becomes the case, essentially everybody wants to invest their money in a Delaware corporation. And I'll tell you, I have you know Michigan LLCs on my books. I have Michigan corporations on the books. And if you get institutional investment of a certain kind, the very first bullet point on that term sheet will be converts into a Delaware C corporation. Um, and so that's just the way it is. Those investors know that law and that's why they pick it. There's nothing wrong with Delaware law. It tends to favor the corporate form over shareholders a little bit more than some other jurisdictions, but not a ton. Uh, and it has the best business judges in the country in their court of chancery. Uh, so that's why it is that way. Shem Pasta. So you all like NATO closed eyes, the happy face emoji. I don't. I don't know what that means. I don't know what that means. <laughs> uh, Hoglaw, do you think Game Pass is the future of gaming monetization? And do you think it's better than traditional buy to play monetization? Do I think it's better? Hmm. I think it's different. I still have concerns that Game Pass will prove long-term profitable for Xbox. I know what they say, folks. I, I, I get it. Xbox fans don't jump on me. Um, I just think that getting that math right for every single thing that could be added to that service is got to be just so taxing on the folks inside Microsoft. And, and they certainly would have had hits and misses using that kind of ad hoc approach. Um, so it will be interesting to see if that ultimately balances out as something that works for them as a company. Um, and do I think it's the future? I think it's the future of part of gaming. Do I think it's everything ever in gaming? I do not. Just like Netflix and purchasing movies can still exist side by side. Uh, Uncivil Law, want to do a stream with me after this? I have no particular topic, but we could hang. Uncivil Law, I am so, so sorry. I have so much work to do on the practicing law side of things after I get through this. Um, I really appreciate it. If you're on and I'm, I get done, I will look to see if I can pop in, but I have so much I have to do. It's end of month, as you probably recognize, which is a big deal for managing the books of a law firm and otherwise dealing with things. So I really appreciate the invite, but I cannot this morning. Um, Jesse James, hey, Hogue, do you think that Rottenborn suggesting that all the jury has to believe is that one time Amber Heard was telling the truth, uh, suggesting some are lies? No. I, I, so that's the that's the interesting thing between a lawyer and a lay person, right? Could a lay person read it that way? Yeah, I suppose. I suppose that a lay person can say this person right now is saying you don't believe my client. Uh, we know you don't believe my client, but you don't have to believe my client in every instance. You just have to find one that works for you. You could read it that way. As a lawyer, I look at it as, oh, that's a good argument. Because that's the argument I come in with when we're looking at opening statements. As I read through, I say, look, these are rough statements in the Washington Post. It's very hard to find defamation because I think they're technically true. But if we go by implication, effectively, it's, did he ever, ever, ever abuse her? And if he did, then the statements aren't false. Uh, and so Rottenborn rightly went with the legalistic, correct kind of argument in my mind. Uh, but at the end of the day, six weeks later, I think it's actually a referendum on do you believe Johnny Depp or do you believe Amber Heard? And I think it's very difficult to come off on the side of I believe Amber Heard over what Johnny Depp has presented. J-Man Finest, since you love gaming so much and the music in it, I would recommend seeing the National Orchestra's gaming music was amazing when I saw it pre-COVID. I don't even know what that is. I've seen ga video games live once. Um, okay, I will check that out. I do love it. Music is so, so integral to the experience of anything, TV, music, uh, movies, video games, uh, and it's often undervalued. In my opinion, people just say that was good. And part of it is the soundtrack, even if they don't realize it. I love music in 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 those kinds of uh, those kinds of media. I just want to make sure I don't miss anything here and then pop into more questions. Gio Rio on BitCast, you lately had the discussion about games and series. Any thoughts on Netflix going to make the Horizon series? I'm replaying Evil Within. Evil Within is a great one. I think that... Uh, Horizon can work as a series. I think they also announced a Bioshock movie that I don't think will work. Horizon is is kind of a standard adventure series. I, I'll be honest. I'll level with you. I don't I don't know that I will much care for the Sony output here. I think Uncharted 
doesn't feel like Uncharted. I don't know whether they're going to be aiming for mass market appeal or something that actually feels like the products they put out. I suspect the former. And so I'm not holding out hope for it, but that low expectation can sometimes make the experience better. So I, I'm not holding out a high expectation for it, but that means that, hey, maybe it could impress me when it's actually done and released. Uni Len, which Final Fantasies have you played? All of them? I think it's all of them. I'd have to really think about it. There might be one missing in there, like three. I don't I don't know that I've played three a lot. Uh, could you please give some quick thoughts on each of them? That's a lot. That is that is a lot, Toothy Face uh, uh, fan. From the German Hogue Final Fantasy Fan Club, Winky Face. I I'll do a few, okay? So Final Fantasy VI is my favorite. We talked about the large cast, the big mid-game twist, uh, and really the emotionality that that game presents. It, it is, as I remember it, the first video game that convinced me you could tell really interesting stories in that medium, and I will always be thankful for that. Final Fantasy IV, a couple of years before that, uh, was uh, one of my favorite games, and that also total cool story. It was just a little bit more Power Rangers e than Final Fantasy VI ultimately wound up being. By the time I play those two games, Final Fantasy VII is a game I'm really waiting for. It comes out in 1997 here in the United States, uh, and uh, that was again another kind of melancholic, very deep operatic story uh, that I really loved. That leads into nine, uh, well, eight, which is just weird, and I love it. Uh, but it is a very weird game that I remember playing deep into the night before a final that I had to take because you never know when these games are going to end. Final Fantasy X is even sadder than the rest of the Final Fantasies. Uh, and I, I have never quite liked it as much as others have. Um, so it's a good game that I don't adore. I think Final Fantasy XI, uh, uh, I only played a little bit of. Final Fantasy XII feels unfinished. Final Fantasy XIII, I like more than most. Uh, Final Fantasy XIV, obviously Eorzeus representing here in the chat. And Final Fantasy XV is a game that uh, I enjoy more than any given aspect of, of its parts. It is, it is better than the sum of its parts. It shouldn't work at all, uh, but it kind of does. So thank you for the question. I really appreciate it. Uh, Shem Pasta, bad joke on my part. I, I'm glad to have found this channel. Thank you. And again, keep up the great work. I don't know what the joke was, but I appreciate I appreciate the super chat. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, what else do we have here? Um, let's go back a little bit. What about offshoots like FF Crystal Chronicles? I have not played every Final Fantasy offshoot game. I can promise you that. I've not played all the Chocobos dungeons or racing. I have not played all of... Um, uh, the the Crystal Chronicles, or, or I, I think there might be another Crystal Chronicles. I haven't played everything ever in Final Fantasy Land. Um, so yeah, and if you just heard me say uh, uh, Chocobo, it's because all of these games were written down before anybody told me that it was supposed to be pronounced Chocobo. Uh, so mostly my brain still goes Chocobo, uh, and I apologize for that. I know it's sincerely offensive uh, to many Final Fantasy fans. Lurker ERS, I saw John Williams directing a concert of his music by the Boston Pops. Bucket list experience. Very awesome. That is awesome. Yeah, John Williams, obviously, one of the best there ever was in what we're talking about here. Uh, you know, the music that accompanies pop culture. Uh, let's see here. What else do we got? Oh, well, how do you feel about free speech? I feel very strongly about free speech. I think you could hear me say that in a number of these videos. Um, that um, you have to be you have to be willing to listen to speech that you don't want to hear uh, or else freedom of speech means nothing at all. Uh, so I feel very, very strongly about that. Uh, and it looks like we're just about ready to wrap this video up. Let's see here, Hogla, if you played Keep Talking and No One Explodes, would love to see Law Team try to play it together. And it's perfect for groups over Zoom. Yeah, it would be. I'd have to think about, yeah, it, that would work. That would work. Yes, lawyers trying to explain things to each other should be very interesting. And yes, I've played that game. It's fantastic. I like playing it with my daughters. Uh, playing all those games with family members is always great because everybody hates each other at the end. Uh, very, very good. Yeah, and, and as Disney technology, I'm sorry. Yeah, I don't represent Disney. I don't have any special, I don't have any special contacts within the Disney Corporation. And I, I definitely wouldn't represent Disney after the video I did about Walt Disney World, I don't think, uh, and their interactions with Florida. Check that out on the channel. Uh, but I do appreciate uh, your believing in me that I have these inside contacts over there. Um, let's see what else we got here. Hogan and Civil, can I get both on my internet radio show one Saturday to talk law, music, and especially vinyl? If so, how? 
you know, DM us. Um, our DMs are absolutely full of stuff <laughs> right now uh, coming off of the trial and so many people meeting us. Uh, but do DM us uh, and, uh, you know, we'll see. We'll see if that makes sense or if we can make the time work. Absolutely. Uh, Terry, thank you for your game recommendations. I'm now my 10-year-old nephew's favorite aunt. That's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. That was actually one of my favorite parts when I worked in a big law firm. I had an assistant that would ask me these things. And uh, it was fun to it was fun to be like, all right, so what are they into? And figuring out uh, what to do because I, I love I love games. Uh, love you all. Is Alita taking a day off? Stay cool. Sunglasses emoji. I don't know. Actually, I, I am. Uh, I, I have to talk with Lita right after this episode. Um, Samuel. Que. That is a chocobo, folks. Or chocobo. Depends on which direction you're coming at it from. Um, okay. So I think we're going to wrap this up. Hogla, if you're pro-free speech, then why are you against swearing? Aren't they just words that we are given? Yes, but decorum is also a thing. I have absolutely no problem with you swearing to your heart's content in your living room or otherwise. But this is this is the space that I am in, right? So if, if you just let anything at all go on, or if you just let anybody at all, um, uh, you know, on onto a guest, if you just invite anybody, then you've you've lost control of what you want your message to be, or or controlling the space that you're saying it in, right? So freedom of speech includes the right to exclude, the right to control your platform or otherwise, right? Like that's part of freedom to speech. In fact, the reason that the Florida law is very likely to go down that would prohibit the Facebooks and the Twitters of the world from banning politicians is because it's an affront to their freedom of speech, which includes the right to ban, to modify, to exclude. Um, and that's a part of freedom of speech. Um, so why do I not want swearing? I don't much care for it. I don't think that it helps communicate the ideas that I want to have communicated here. I think it somewhat... Um, obscures reasonable minds can differ and i have no problem with people doing it in any other space so in terms of that question which i think is a good one and i'm, I'm glad that i get to kind of highlight it a little bit here um it's important if you want to build something if you want to build a community a specific way if you want to have conversations a specific way and here in that kind of reasonable minds can differ kind of uh avenue it's important to be able to know what works for you and what doesn't work for you and that freedom of speech includes all of those things. And so, you know, if you're if you're busy swearing on my channel or swearing in the chat or what have you, then it is fully within kind of even freedom of speech precepts to say, OK, you, you should you should go a different place. You should go a different uh, area. And there are plenty of places to go for that. And I highly recommend it. Hell, go see Emily Baker. Uh, who is awesome, fantastic, and her cursy words are what she's known by. Absolutely. Um, it's, not a, it's not a blanket proposition. It's just what I want to be associated with, what I want this message to be, what I want this to be out there in the world, what I feel strongly about. But even then, you see Emily come on the channel, and she lets out an accidental curse word. It's not, oh, my God, you're an affront to everything I stand for. It's, <laughs> I know you're trying. And, you know, whatever. We make a joke about it. There are ways to deal with these things that are, you know, friendly and are trying to meet in the middle. Uh, and so, look, I appreciate what you're saying, but definitely controlling the messaging in your own platform, in your own space is paramount to realizing my freedom of speech. Uh, so thank you for asking the question. Um, and yeah, I don't, I, I don't see. I lost track of where we are. We were. Uh, I got, I, we'll put the Chicobo back up. <laughs> Uh, we got that. Uh, we got that. Favorite ant. Um, let's see here. All right. Uh, that's fair. I just wanted to ask for discussion's sake. Sure. You're right. Free speech isn't the same as saying you have to like my speech. Of course. No, I think we understand that here. And I don't mind asking the question. I don't mind anybody asking me any questions um about all this stuff i'm happy to talk about all these things um as uh, as as we go down the line certainly there's a lot of there's a lot of churn going on right now uh in my channel and other spaces that i i may talk to here at the end of all things um but uh yeah as the law patrol says here it's more impactful to argue without expletives anyway sometimes sometimes it really works in people's vernacular i tend to like to use them as a uh, uh, controlled weaponry uh, it, you know that I'm serious if I go out with something, right? Uh, if, if Rick says something, it, it, you, you, you think about it uh, a little bit more than maybe somebody else. 
Uh, being eloquent is the high road. I, I'm only I'm only sometimes eloquent, I think. Uh, plus, it's funny if it goes over the other person's head. Uh, uh, but yeah, you know, I it's just it's just the way I I want to operate. So there you go. Uh, let's see here. Um, I love the respect that you and Emily have for each other. You accept each other where you are. Makes my soul happy. Absolutely. Emily's fantastic. What would the world be like if you were stuck with only me <laughs> to talk to or only versions of you, right? There's a great Twilight Zone episode about somebody I think that wishes for everybody to be like him. And it's the worst. It's the worst. Our differences make this fun, makes conversation fun, even differences on very important fundamental things. And we learn and grow by that kind of reasoned disagreement. Now things progress into factionalism and ad hominems here on this space, and that's no fun. And we're trying our best to go out there with the notion that reasoned disagreement and recognizing the other person's humanity is awesome. And Emily, Emily and I, you know, I'm, I'm sure we disagree on a bunch of stuff. We also don't disagree on a bunch of stuff. We just have a different approach to communication. That's not even like a fundamental paramount disagreement, but absolutely. Um, Emily is 1000% free to run her channel as she likes. And she's so funny. She comes in here and she's trying to obey the rules and it's, it's just who she is. I can see that. I understand that. And that's fantastic. Uh, what else we got here? Well, we got the purple hearts. Cause if you say Emily Baker, there will be purple hearts. Um, uh, and, uh, yeah, I mean, I guess we could talk about this as kind of an ancillary thing here. Cause I, I know a lot of people are asking about it. Um, so, all right, this will be the last thing I talk about today. So I appreciate everybody that supported the channel. Um, yeah, so there's a lot of questions, a lot of comments that I think people are coming into my channel and saying like, what the heck is going on? Uh, right. And, uh, effectively it was this, uh, uh I think it was on Wednesday or, or Thursday, uh, Legal Bites, um, Alita over at her channel, uh, decided uh, that she didn't want uh, her channel to be associated uh, with some with some folks. As we were just talking about with respect to you know freedom of speech, which includes freedom of association uh, and, and various other things, um, she is entirely within her rights to not want to associate with some people. You don't have to agree with her decision, by the way, there, but it is not some broad-faced injustice to say that someone doesn't have the right to stream with Alita or doesn't have the right to stream with me uh, on this channel. I think you can all imagine in this space, if you really think about it, a personality that exists on YouTube and it might be Ben Shapiro or it might be the Young Turks or it might be whoever else you want to fill in that you would just not want to associate with if you were running a YouTube channel or that you would not want to see your favorite YouTuber associate with. Um, and you might disagree with your favorite YouTuber on whether or not that association is granted. I'm not here to convince you otherwise. I'm here to say a couple of things. And this is really the only things I will say about it because I and Alita aren't really interested in doing the dirty laundry YouTube drama thing. Uh, I don't think it's terribly useful. I don't think it's great for communities to actually do that to each other. Um, I, I, I will, I will say, I will say this, look, um, Legal Bites can make that decision. And I think from the messages I've received throughout the Johnny Depp versus Amber Heard trial, one of the things that I've gotten compliments on and that people have believed in is that, you know, I'm I'm supportive of Alita and trying to help her and her channel grow. Um, and I think that when a friend makes a tough decision, I wouldn't be a friend at all if I didn't talk to her about it and support that tough decision, however, however it comes out. Um, she is well within her rights to decide <clears throat> that her brand is this and that uh, there are too many risks uh, that she associates with that association um, to warrant continuing it on the channel. And nobody has a right to be on another person's channel. Uh, and so we have to actually have those conversations. And I'm very, very sorry. I'm very, very sorry that people in some respects have taken offense to that. I um, am sure that no offense was intended, um, but I'll be honest, the immediate aftermath of that decision and the steps that some people took in response to it 
in my opinion, vindicated the initial decision almost entirely. Um, that publication of materials that were intended to try to keep things uh, drama free, uh, that having conversations that were not intended to be had in this space or any other, the attack mobs, the ad hominem attacks on Alita. Myself, I don't care about. Attack me all you like. Not in this space because a model gets you, but that's totally fine. The attacks on, on, on Alita for effectively saying, I just prefer to not uh, to not associate with you on, on the channel is just absurd to me. That it's not an affront to justice. She didn't do anything that kept anybody out of court. She didn't take away any LawTube awards. And if you actually looked at that page, you'd realize it's some guy trying to sell blocks to us. I mean, like, that's what it is. It's a, it's a multi-level marketing scheme, <clears throat> a Ponzi scheme or whatever. It has nothing to do with any of that. And Alita is the nicest person you will ever meet. Um, and I am so, so supportive of her. And I would hope that that level of support of a friend would be seen as a positive aspect. I know that a number of you disagree, and I'm very sorry to see you go. I am never going to apologize for supporting someone I believe in, and I'm never going to apologize for backing that up on online and the internet and elsewhere. So I'm going to continue to be Alita's friend. I'm going to continue to be her um, support structure, and I would very much hope that a number of you would at least reflect on, on what that means and whether Alita should be punished for ultimately trying to, behind closed doors, decide, hey, I don't feel comfortable with this relationship anymore. And whether anybody that you associate with could ever do something to make you feel that and decide that you don't want to associate with them and should you have the right to do that. That's all I'll say about that. I'm not about drama. I'm not about to drag anybody. I'm not about to talk through the decision reasoning and why it was made <clears throat> because I talked to her about it. It was rational. She had good thoughts on why it was going to happen. It was still a tough decision. All of this has been realized on her. And I very much hope uh, that you give her the chance and respect that she deserves. Um, as for me, you're welcome to take it out on me if you would like. I, um, I'm good for it. So that's what I will say on that. Um, and I very much appreciate everybody jumping in uh, to question time. I think there's one more super chat, but I'm going to skip it because I want that to be my end statement. I very much apologize. I'll try to answer you separately. Have a great weekend, everybody. If you're in the United States, have a great Memorial Day weekend. Uh, and many thanks to all the service that our veterans in the United States have given to us. Have a great one, everybody.